In today's lab chat, we're asking the question, how do you screen using 740 microRNAs efficiently? Today we're here with Martin from Erasmus Medical Center in the Netherlands, and he's going to talk to us about uh, his work with testicular cancer. Martin? Hi. Well, actually, we, we have been working on uh, with this group on, uh, on testicular germ cell cancer for, for well, several decades, and one of the most uh, interesting uh, things in this field is how to detect the, the cancer uh, in, in the subject. Um, there are several markers available currently where, in which we can detect some subtypes. There are a lot of subtypes of germ cell cancer, but the, yeah, well, so, let's say the stem cell components of this cancer are still uh, undetectable in the blood of um, in the serum of, of, of cases. Now, you mentioned that these uh, germ cell cancers are a lot like stem cells and that they don't exist sort of in mature mature adults, yeah? Right, right. Well, specific, indeed, these, these stem cell components are, uh, are quite similar to embryonic stem cells in, in many properties uh, and also uh, with regard with what we're specifically working on their microRNA profile in the tumor. Mm -hmm. And as far as the microRNAs, there were about seven that you're looking on, looking at in molecular oncology 2013, is that correct? Yes, those were a targeted set. We, we already knew that these, um, these specific microRNAs were present in, uh, in, in the, in the seminoma and embryonocarcinoma, so the stem cell components of our cancer, and they indeed were also present in, in very early embryonic uh, cells, so stem cells. And then uh, where, where did your research take you from there? Well, what we were thinking, if you have these, these seven, shouldn't there be more? I mean, there are thousands of microRNAs in the, uh, in, in the human cells, and uh, why only these seven? Uh, we were actually looking for a platform that could, to, could give us, uh, in an efficient manner, the, uh, the expression levels of, of, or let's say the levels of microRNAs in the serum of, uh, of, of cases with, uh, with testicular germ cell cancer. And then what did you end up using? Well, actually, the most broad approach would be a next-gen sequencing approach, but that would also bankrupt us. So that's not that's not the approach that we choose. We wanted to to specifically look at microRNAs, and we were uh, then looking at the uh, by Biosystems Techman, Techman uh, platform, which ampl which which allows us to to uh, to look at the expression of around 740, 750 microRNAs specifically. So I understand then that, that was with the open array or with the Techman array cards. The Techman array card, sorry. I see. And so then the Tachman array cards looking at a panel of 740 microRNAs, then what did you find? Uh, what, well, we, we, we looked at uh, uh, 35 subjects and um, uh, they also included a number of subjects which had, of course, no, uh, no cancer. We found that, for starters, that a number of our originally found targets, microRNAs were were present in our in our analysis, so they were high in the cancer group and um, and low in the control group. So that's that's promising, of course. Otherwise, it would be a difficult analysis. But one of the the, the new targets that we, for example, found is mere five hundred in eleven, uh, and that that microRNA actually gave us also a very nice discriminative power between the uh, the cases and the controls. And it, it's also a microRNA that's known to be involved in spermatogenesis, so the maturation of of, of male germ cells in in dogs and in mice. I see. And then I'll, I also understand that you used a sample prep product from Applied Biosystems. Is that correct? Yes. Well, actually, the problem is for us, we, we, we started off this quite some time ago um, directly analyzing the RNA from the, the serum. And that's problematic because the, the recovery is, is very low and already the levels of those microRNAs are low. So what we uh, started using were the magnetic uh, the magnetic beads that contained antisense probes on their surface uh, for specific microRNAs, so around 380 per bead set, um, and we could use those to uh, to actually extract the microRNAs from the serum and then uh, process the aggregate from these uh, uh, these beads further. Mm -hmm. And then, as far as that process goes, I understand it was a lot more straightforward and a lot better yield than the methods you had been using before. Yes, well, actually, the direct uh, isolation was um, to use a blunt worth, worthless. I mean, there was too little RNA recovery to work with, and uh, at this moment, for specific microRNAs, we can detect very low levels 
of uh, of the microRNAs in in the direct assays. So it really yields a very high rec recovery as compared to to um, yeah, to more general general uh, isolation methods. Yes, and then I understand this work has recently been published. Right in in uh, uh, in andrology, uh, we published um, a, a paper that uh, that describes these these cancer versus. Um, uh, versus control uh, comparison in which we identify a number of novel microRNA targets using uh, using these these Techman cards. That's great. Well, if any of you are interested in accessing that particular paper, the reference is right here. And if you have any questions for Martin, please feel free to leave them in the comments. <laughs>